I'm Tom van Hulten. I'm working at Growth Balance Advising Company. My responsibility is to make sure that the crops are growing well and keep healthy. The main goal of this experience is to get the highest yield with the less of water. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Baar. In this project, the function I have is giving advice on the use of sustainable soil technology, uh, particularly with plant beneficial uh, fungi that act as biofertilizers. The substrate you see here is mixed with the mycorrhiza. The mycorrhizal fungi is a fungus that brings over the nutrients and the water to the roots, so it's connected, and then the roots take up the nutrients and the water, bring it up to the shoots, to the green parts of the plants. And uh, in exchange, the plants provide sugars from the photosynthesis to the fungus. The main goal of this experiment is to investigate whether we can grow crops like tomatoes, cucumbers, etc. Uh, with as less possible water use as possible. It's very interesting to use low quantity of water because one of the big issues worldwide is the limitation of water. The tomato plants are grown up this size in four weeks. So the plants that are untreated with the mycorrhizal fungi are smaller and they also have a different color. As you can see, they're a little bit on the darkest side and this indicates that they have a shortness of nutrients. That's not so strange because the substrate was treated with half the amount of, uh, of fertilizer and they don't have the helpers, the mycorrhizal fungi, to provide them with the nutrients. And here, the mycorrhizal fungi obtain all the nutrients that are available in the substrate, although it's still the half amount of fertilizer. But they can take it up with their hyphae, uh, but here, there's only the roots that can take up the nutrients. That is less efficient than the mycorrhizal fungi do. By planting out already vigorous and strong plants with a good root system, the chances that they uh, survive uh, with a low water gift are much higher. We expect that we can grow the crops with 90% less water, but the crops could also die because there's too little water. What also could happen is that the microorganisms are not as functional as we expect and that also the crops don't develop so well or get sick or don't uh, produce the amount of yield we, uh, we are aiming for. We use this kinds of tray. It's very high, 18 centimeters, to make sure that the primary roots are going down and we want to plant them safely in the soil without damaging them. That's why the plant can go down to the water. That's why we can grow the plants with less of water. It's very important that the capillary stays intact, otherwise the plant cannot take its water. The water can come up out of the ground, up with the capillary to the plant. When you dig the soil with a machine, the soil is loose and the capillary from the soil is gone. That's why we use a pin to make the hole for the plant that the capillary stays intact. It's very important. We put in extra mycorrhiza and afterwards we put over the water box. To connect the plants with the soil, we give them one liter of water, not in the box, but into the hole where the plants are standing. To take care of the plants that they get water, we are making two ropes and they come out on the underside. And the ropes are the equipment to give the water to the soil and the plants. So we fill up the box with water and the ropes take care that the box is not going empty in 15 minutes but that it takes three or four weeks. The plant always gets some drops of water. When we leave the box open, yeah, animals can drink out of it. Evaporation is very big. That's why we cover it with a plastic plate like this. Then a lot of evaporation is already gone. But to save the water what's falling on the box, we have a real cover. We put the cover on the box like this and we close it. 
Now the water can fall on the box and it's going through these blue holes inside the box and it cannot come out. It's going out, of course, through the ropes to the plant. The biggest challenge for us is to use 90% less water and get the highest yield possible. But the biggest challenge is for the plant himself because the plant needs the water for the process in the plant to, make, to take the minerals to grow and to cool himself. So when it's getting very hot, the plant uses the water to cool himself with evaporation. That's for the plant the biggest challenge if he can grow with this less of water. These tomato plants are, are now seven weeks old. It was not treated with mycorrhizal fungi and bacteria, but it received the usual, usual fertilization treatment. As you can see, the plant grows well, and uh, we think it's an okay plant. But if we compare it to treatments with mycorrhizal fungi and bacteria, we will see tremendous difference. These tomato plants have also been seeded at March 12. Uh, these tomato plants have not received any fertilizers, but they have received mycorrhizal fungi and bacteria. And these plants received uh, at least 50%, 60% less water than usual. So the mycorrhizae and the bacteria help the plant not only to take up nutrients, but they help also the plant to take up um, water. These plants look healthy, vital, and they already form uh, buds. This means that they are going to flower soon and to set the first fruits. And that is rather rapid after seven weeks already. Now we are doing this big trial with the water boxes. Of course, it's always very interesting to make a competition with a normal system and the water box system. That's why we planted here the plants directly into the soil and giving them water like a normal grower should do. And then we are looking what will be best. These uh, pepper plants have been seeded a month ago. What we can see here is the non-treated mycorrhizal plants. And these plants are treated with mycorrhizal fungi. You can see there is a clear difference between the non-treated plants and the treated plants. And this uh, difference is very pronounced. This is why we use a rhizotron. Here you can see the root development, which is really poor for the small non-mycorrhizal plant. While the plant that is treated with the mycorrhizal fungi has a very well developed mycorrhizal root system. We make the choice not to heat the greenhouse so that we can grow like we did uh, 50 years ago. That's why the plants in the morning when the sun is coming are not picking up the climate because they are not warmed up and the temperature is going too fast, too high. That's why the plants are getting a little bit um, weak. The plants are going to hang. They are, cannot stand the, the evaporation of the, of the greenhouse. That's why they are not growing so fast. When we heat the greenhouse in the morning, the plant can better take up the climate of the day and we have no CO2 so there is nothing no CO2 almost no water and no heating in the morning that's why these plants don't give the optimum production of a hydroponic system we are only doing this on basic elements I'm uh, Peter Hof from Holland I'm the inventor of the Croasis water box. The water box functions in a way which is actually quite simple. It has a cover that's collecting water in two ways, through condensation or through rain. The water is getting into the bucket and the bucket has a model of a donut. In the middle of that donut, we plant the tree or in this case, the vegetables. Now, because of the fact that the bucket is on top of the soil and the water is in it, the temperature below the box remains very cool. So even if we have the sun which is shining on the soil or when we have very high uh, air temperatures, still the temperature below the water box is not higher than 25 degrees Celsius. This means that your roots never have stress. They always have a cool temperature and that makes them growing very fast 
and very deep. And that's actually the trick. If the trees grow very deep, the plant will have sufficient water to survive during the hot hours of the day. The reason that I've started with this trial is that while traveling all over the world, I see the problems that people have if they want to grow vegetables or if they want to grow food. They have little capital, they have many times not even energy for pumps, there's a water problem, uh, they cannot even pay the fertilizers. So if we can develop uh, a method to grow vegetables with very little water, without using energy and without using fertilizers, then we actually can help poor farmers to still produce sufficient food for the people in the cities. There are about 300 million poor farmers in the world that have a problem to grow in the modern, modern way with uh, hydroponics. If you want to grow with drip irrigation, you need to dig a well, and a well costs you $5,000. You need electricity for the pump, which is also very expensive. So uh, you cannot grow vegetables on a small scale if you want to do that with drip irrigation. With this method, any family can buy five or ten boxes and then produce food even for their own use. And uh, as you see here, we have extremely good results. We have fantastic tomatoes and also all our other vegetables are very successful. Now, of course you have various challenges and the most important one is that how do you bring the minerals, the food that the plants need, to the plant if you hardly use any water? Because if you use too much artificial fertilizers, then the roots will burn. Now, for that reason, we have done a lot of trials with mycorrhizae. Mycorrhizae are funguses that actually uh, are living in the soil and help the roots to eat the minerals in a better and more efficient way. So what actually is happening is that the mycorrhizae dissolve the minerals and they give them to the plant and the plant pays with sugars to the mycorrhizae and this is how the humus in the soil, the percentage of it, get higher. And what happens is that the mycorrhizae dissolve the uh, minerals in the soil so well that although we hardly have used any fertilizers, we still have a fantastic crop. And uh, we're very proud of that, to have a good crop and still using almost no fertilizers. The fertilizers that we have used are actually biological fertilizers just manure. So before planting we have mixed a little bit of compost and manure through the soil and then we have planted our plants on it. We didn't use artificial fertilizers, which means that you also save a lot of money because fertilizers are very expensive. When you see these tomatoes hanging here, the first question you have is how many kilos a square meter are you going to get of this new system. When we are counting, we, we count uh, an amount of uh, 300 tomatoes a square meter, more or less. The tomatoes weight is uh, more or less 35 grams. So that means that we have between 10 and 12 kilos of this cocktail tomatoes.